you take a look at this here. This is no small thing. So with the retractable keel, you can actually pick this whole thing up and pull it out? Yep. This part down in here. Okay. So this is basically a hole in the ship which um, we mount all of our sonars on. Okay. Is that the sonars down there? Each, each one of those little square bays, those two feet by two foot bays, uh, house a sonar that's about... 22 feet below, or not 22 feet, it's about 12 feet below where we see right now. Okay. Uh, so the forward bay has, normally houses the multi-beam sonar. Uh-huh. So we would have to lower a crane down there and pull that bay out of there and then put the multi-beam bay back in. Okay. Currently down there we have a, a single beam echo sounder which just gives us know a single depth reading okay and then our adcp sonar which adcp acronym please it's an acoustic doppler current profile okay and what does so that do it measures currents below the boat okay so and the it, water current yep and it takes out ship speed and, and uh, gives you the water current below the vessel okay all right so this is the drop keel so how do you get the drop keel out well first you have to take this off you want to do all these bolts, take this, uh, control this inflates all of our seals and allows us to lift, lift this uh, keel up and down using uh, compressed air. Uh-huh. Take that back off. We'll actually lift up with the crane from this center pickup point. So that center pickup point, they pick it up with the crane and just pull the whole thing out. Pick it up with the crane. And we'll have to get it to this level and we shove holes underneath the... Uh, body of the keel, disconnect this pole, and then we'll pick up from the bottom of the pole after it's disconnected. Okay. And then we can pick up this entire thing and take it out. I've got a dumb question. Sure. We've got a big hole in the ship. Why doesn't it sink? That's a good question. Uh, it's interesting sailing around with a big hole in the ship. <laughs> but I guess we're bu- as buoyant as we need to be elsewhere, so it, it doesn't matter. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. All right, back with Brian Kidd, but now we're back in the warehouse. He's going to show me the multi-beam in the warehouse. I'm trying to figure out how that's going to work. <laughs> so this is our Rezon 8101 sonar head. Oh, this is a sonar head. This is actually how it would extend down from the bottom of the vessel. Okay. Our data cable, which is right here, um, would plug in to this connector. Okay. Um, then the, I'm going to kind of roll this thing over on the side so we can get a better look at it. Mm-hmm. Is there a top or a bottom to it? This is the bottom. That's the bottom. So this is what's facing the bottom of the uh, ocean. Huh, I was thinking it would be flat. This projector emits the sound pulse uh-huh. from here. It bounces off the uh, ocean floor. Uh-huh. And then this array here receives the so, pulse back. So you got a transmitter and a receiver all in one unit. Yep. So this will emit... Um, a pulse, and then this will kind of align it in a 150 degree swap mm-hmm. with from that one single pin. And how many of those do you have? How many of these? Yep. Just one. So there's just one of them under the ship for yep. the multi beam. Yep. Oh, here I was thinking there's going to be a whole slew of them. No, there's only one. Okay. It does everything. It has a, an aluminum housing here, um, and we put these zinc anodes on it to. Pre- Corrosion. Mm-hmm. Does it actually go in the water, or is it uh, in a, some kind of an enclosure under it the ship? It actually goes in the water, yeah. Oh, it usually okay. comes up with barnacles and all kinds of growth on it, and we have to clean it up. How often do you have to clean these things? Uh, it doesn't take too long. Just power wash it down. It takes most of it off. Okay. You can kind of scrub it a little bit with a non-abrasive cloth or something. And you've just got one of these? Just one. Mm-hmm. Just one. So this is the one that was on the ship, or this is the... This is the one that was on the ship. Okay. Yep. So you pulled it out. Why? Uh, we pulled it out it? to clean it up, and we didn't have any scheduled use for it. Okay. Um, so we usually take it out once a year anyway and clean it all up. All right. So usually about, usually about yearly you clean it up? Yep. And... Uh, Boy, we lucked out. Time really is just years. right. <laughs> Not too often. It's like, oh, yeah, the multi-beam is right over here in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Every two years we send it back for calibration, and, you know, they'll take it apart and make sure it needs Okay with it. Okay. And you said this is a resin 8101? Yeah, Rezon 8101, shallow water multi-beam. Okay. And where's Rezon? Rezon is a German company. Um, their United States office is in uh, 
California, mm -hmm. Santa Barbara. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how many multi-beam uh, manufacturers are there? Um, I think I've seen Rizon. I've seen Rizon. There's Consberg. There's Consberg. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. There's two or three more of them. Like they're escaping me right now. Okay. But yep. There's. Now, it's usually when I, uh, I run the research vessels database, and usually I see these on big ships. Is that unusual for something to be this like this to be on a small ship? Um, no, I mean you could. We ran these. I've seen them ran on a, a small little, you know, forty foot launch. Mm -hmm. So as long as you can compensate for the vessel motion and you know, record that in an accurate manner, you can use this on whatever you can mount it to. Really. Oh, interesting. Well, cool. Glad we time this this way. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's nice to see the actual sonar head. Mm -hmm. Get a little closer look over here. Mm -hmm. So that's the transmitter over there, and then the receiver is this uh, band of black. Band right here. Yep. And then Excellent. this mounts to the actual uh, keel that we just looked at. <laughs> I can show you the actual um, metal bay that it mounts to. Oh. Right up, right up cool. Here. Let's go look. Here. So this okay. is the actual bay that we were kind of looking, we were looking at the top of it up there when we looked at the keel. Right. So you can see it extends down, I think it's roughly 12 feet. About 12 feet down into the water? Yep. Okay. And uh, the sonar head, those bolts we just saw, they will mount right in here. This slides up right into this, something like that. Okay. And then the sonar head, the actual the head will extend down right around in this, this area. Excellent. And we'll pick this thing up and lower it right down into the Pretty fortuitous. And the, the data cable runs right up this tube in uh -huh. the center. And uh, yeah. those are the cables that we saw sticking out of the top over yep. there in the drop keel section. Exactly. Uh, does everybody have a drop keel for these? No, this is the only one I've ever heard of. Uh, wow. I'm not familiar with any other retractable keel. So how do the other guys do it if they don't have a drop keel? They normally have to bring in divers and uh, go down and detach the sonar from, you know. Yikes, underwater. Yeah, underwater. Uh -huh. We'll tape up the uh, wet or dry end of the cable, make it so it can go underwater, and then we'll feed it down to the diver, and then they bring the, the sonar up to the side, and we'll hoist it up with some lines or something. Huh. Yep. That sounds like a lot of work. A lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Sure. All right. Good forethought. Yep. Oh, good. I'm glad this worked out. Yeah, it was good.